What's going on, everybody? You're tuned in to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Lizzy the Gifted, and I've got such a special treat for everybody today. We are going to be talking to one of the most talented singers I've ever had the pleasure of coming across. We networked on Instagram. Um, she was just on The Voice. We will talk more about that later in the episode, so I'm super pumped. Uh, help me in welcoming Peyton Lamar. What is going on? How are you, Peyton? Good. I'm really good. I've been on cloud nine for like the past few months, but um, I'm right. good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you. So we'll, we'll talk about The Voice, uh, I guess, a little bit later. I want to hear a little bit about your background, though, first. Like, how was it like, what was it like for you growing up? Were, were you in a musical family? Like, how did you get into music? Oh my gosh. Um, there is no music in my family. Nobody is musically uh, talented. That sounds terrible. Yeah, but, um, so mean. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that sounds so terrible. Um, I mean, we just would casually sing um, and um, always loved like going to karaoke nights and stuff with my family. But um, the performing kind of came from my dad. He was a professional ballroom dancer who like would travel the world and whoa cool yeah, at all these like Fred Astaire studios and um so he's very much a performer um and so I got a lot of that from him and then uh I just love to sing so I mean when I was uh, in school like my I had my little journal but it ended up turning into like a lyric journal and then uh -huh. I would start writing songs in like the first and second grade and it just built from there. So very young. That's very, so wait, you do. I mean, your dad did ballroom dancing. Like that's, it's not music making, but it was involved in like, you know, the arts, like for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, super cool. Um, yeah, in the living room, he would always like teach us how to like count the music and um, oh, yeah. like teach us all these steps. But I was like, I'll just sing the song and you go ahead and dance. So <laughs> very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So it's kind of funny because like when I grew up, like I grew up playing basketball and all that. And like, oh, cool. I kind of like listened to rap a little, but I, I mean, I was so young, I didn't know. But then my mom put me into hip hop dance classes. And so like, yes. I, oh, yeah, mom. yeah. So yeah, right. Cause she's a, my mom dances. Like she does jazz, like hip hop. Now she's a Zumba instructor. Uh, all that stuff. Get right. Get me in so, on one of those classes. I'll take a <laughs> class. Oh my God. You'll be better than me. I'm, I suck at Zumba. So yeah. I um, tried. Like that's amazing. Well, of course I got to try it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So yeah. So I mean, I similar where like, that's, that was my first introduction to music. Hip hop was like, I kind of got that rhythm. So that's cool that your dad, that's really cool. What did your mom do? Um, my mom, the only like music that like, well, she's a teacher, but like, Growing up at night, she would just always sing us to sleep. The Do you know Jewel? Um, uh, what is uh -huh. the song that she sang? I hear the clock at 6 a.m. Oh, that yeah. Song. So always would sing us to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, but she ended up getting her doctorate and is now like, a, I don't know, a doctor of education. And so mm -hmm. she's killing it now. I'm so inspired by her. Amazing. Shout out to moms, right? Oh, gosh, moms. Yeah. So very cool. So how did you get into music? When was your first like experience with music? Um, church and singing Jesus music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My grandma would drag us to Baptist church on Sunday mornings. And then she was like, this is it, Peyton. You're going to start singing in the choir. And so I started singing and then, um, some mornings I would lead, um, that's where it kind of like started initially. Um, but at home, when I would get home, I would, we always had like one of those big VHS recorders. Mm -hmm. And so we would just like reenact these talent shows in our living room. So we would all get dressed up and we'd take turns like recording music videos. And so I loved it. I, was, I have so many videos of us like acting a fool in our living room, trying to pull off some Christina Aguilera performance and- Very cool. Making it work. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. And then ended up going into, um, like doing talent shows in school um, and then did my first big competition. Oh, was it in Lake city, Florida? And okay. I won like a thousand dollar prize. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. I, was, I think I was like 16 or something. 
yeah so it was awesome and then from there I was like okay I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep going for it I'm gonna figure out how to get my own music figure out how to um, write my own songs professionally get them done get them produced and pushed out so just been really working towards that nice awesome like where who did you who did you grow up listening to um who were some of your musical influences um growing up i mean i loved i loved these big voices like um i loved christina i loved kelly clarkson i loved um jesse j um all these super pop artists yeah um, but then i once i got a little bit older i fell in love with these soul artists mm. so um got really into aretha franklin um really into alicia keys loved singing her stuff so somewhere in between pop and r&b slash soul like yeah just to get etta james like oh loved it Right. And you're, you're, where are you from? You're from Nashville. Is that right? Uh, no, I'm actually from Jacksonville, Florida. And then, gotcha. uh, yeah, we live in Nashville now. Got it. So you're from yeah. Florida, live in Nashville now. Are you like, what's like, so I'm from California. Okay. And I, I've never, I've never been in Nashville. Um, you know, I live in the Bay area near San Francisco. So like yeah. there's a definitely in, in the Bay area, we have a certain kind of music scene and like in LA, in LA, it's, it's, it's LA. So there's like, yeah big time industry stuff going on but you know one of my friends who's a music producer Corey, i said hey like when you like where do you eventually want to live one day you know he's like oh i want to move to nashville you know and i was like well what's going on in nashville like you know i know there's country music and he's like yeah but it's there's not just country music like it's a whole nother yeah vibe and i i've, I've never been so i don't know break it down for me a little like what's what's going on in nashville like musically and just in general Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Corey's on it. It takes a second. We first moved here and I was like, man, like this is the country market. Like this is where all the country artists, all the country songwriters come. Um, but once I like figured out and tapped into the pop scene here in Nashville, it's massive and it's like thriving. Um, I think mm. it's just the stereotype of Nashville, but, um, man as soon as i figured out who are who are the pop artists and who are the pop writers and producers in town um and a big part of that came when i did the key west songwriters festival i don't mm -hmm. know if you know about that but i no. went um, i went down to the keys and played and everybody from nashville so many artists from nashville go to play there of course it didn't happen this year but last year and then um I just got connected with so many other pop artists, pop writers, um, who are signed and like just killing it. And um, so yeah, it just takes a second to figure out who those people are and then where the like where the events are happening. There's this round that some of these like um, publishers would put together of just pop artists, um, pop rounds or like pop nights, and so. It's a scene that I'm like, all right, I feel like it's it's at the beginning stages, but could be really, could have a lot of potential. So I'm just glad to be here right now. Very interesting. Okay. So that, that that's so great. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. How did you, let's jump, jump subjects for a minute. And yeah. I want to hear more about this, but how did you end up like, when you got on to the voice, like talk about like that whole process. Like, what was that like? Yeah. So um, the voice was putting on this open mic earlier this year or uh late last year this open mic they've been doing these like gigs downtown nashville um at these live music venues and so i was like oh my gosh like that'd be so cool um i don't really play out live because i was like nervous and we just moved here and i was like this is the country scene i can't just go out there and play pop music but when i saw the voice was putting on an open mic i was like i can do that like that's comfy like it's not like old red is putting on some country show it's um just the voice so anything's open so mm -hmm. i submitted a video and they contacted me and they're like hey we don't want you to come and do the open mic we want you to come and audition i was like uh, okay like that right. could be cool too um so yeah i ended up going to this private audition um and they had me come in sing a few songs and and like since then it just it just 
went up from there. So it was just crazy because there have been times where I like stood in those hour long lines, you know, like going mm -hmm. to audition and try out for these kinds of shows. And just like one time where I submit a video for an open mic, they're like, hey, actually come audition. So wow, crazy. What, what was it? What did it feel like? I was so excited. I was like, I was like, I have tried so hard. And you mean to tell me that this is how easy it's supposed to be? And I was like, man, I wish I would have known. Like, it's crazy how you'll like turn your head like towards an opportunity just because you think like that's not what you really want. But you have no idea what doors open through just that one opportunity. So I just had no clue. So I was just kind of like shocked. Um, mm -hmm. because I wanted to give up auditioning because it takes so much like you stand in line for hours and then you just have like 30 seconds to sing and then you go home and sometimes you drive for hours to get there so um I was so mm -hmm. excited yeah yeah I feel that oh that's that you know you really painted a good picture because you're like driving like whatever three four hours and you're like waiting in line and like you exactly. get up you have 30 yeah. seconds and then you're out so it, it was more natural. It kind of was like, I felt more comfortable because I was like, man, if I don't get this open mic gig, then that's okay. Like I can totally jump on another one. Um, so I was more calm and, and felt like it was a more of a comforting space because there wasn't so much pressure built up before that, like 30 seconds of auditioning, you know? Right. More natural. Very interesting. Yeah. So, so it's so funny what you bring up, like how, that's something I discovered this year was that things, I mean, there's obviously hard work you have to put in, but certain things like making certain connections aren't as hard as we make them out to be because there's literally human beings on the other side of what we see. Like, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and so I, it's so in, like, I'm talking to somebody who's been on the voice, but you're like a normal ass person. And it's like, Oh, that's actually cool. Like everybody has their own experiences, but at the end of the day, we're all people and yes, we're all, I love that. I love that. To me, it was like, that's impossible. Like people who get on the voice, they're like, they're not real. Like those people, I don't know. Those, those right. People, I totally they, feel they knew somebody who knew somebody. So to actually right. be able to say like, yes, I actually auditioned. And I mean, even though I didn't stand on the line or whatever, but still like people, there people are people. And even when I got to LA and I started meeting the people behind the scenes, I love them even more. Cause I mean, if you like, I don't know if you don't look at it as like, if you don't look at it that way, if you don't look at it as like people are just people, you know, then you're like putting too much pressure on the whole experience and you're overthinking everything. And then you're almost like, you're missing out on opportunities to connect with others because you're just so worried about like what people are thinking of you, but really everybody just wants to connect. And so that we did when we got up to LA, everybody got so close. So it's yeah. Awesome. yeah, that's so, that's so real what you said. Like everybody just, we all just want to connect and like, we're all into music or, or maybe you could be in a different space. You might be in the personal fitness space and like, I don't know how it is in that space. I'm just saying like, people are just like, I know in music, we're all trying to connect. And I know like, I'm in like this like rap hip hop thing where it's got this weird facade where it's like competitive, yeah. but like, it's not like, it seems like it's competitive. And like a lot of rappers feel like they need to act competitive when it's really like, you don't actually have to do that. Like you can actually collab with everybody, yes. yeah. you know, people on love, everything. Yeah. Like people love the work with people like creatives love creative people. So no matter right. what space it is. So that's something that I definitely, like, I definitely learned from being on The Voice. I mean, mm -hmm. especially because so many artists live here, you know? In right. It's been crazy. Talk about, like, okay, I don't really, like, watch TV. Like, I don't really watch The Voice. Like, and some people might not know how it works. How does it's The okay. Voice work? Like, what are the rules? Like, break yeah. it down for people. Um, yeah, so the first round is blind. So, basically, you have, like, 90 seconds to sing a song with four chairs turned around. Um, and with four judges, of course, like this season, it was Blake Shelton, John Legend, Gwen Stefani, and Kelly Clarkson. And so um, in the first round, each coach kind of has a chance to block another coach. So let's say like um, both John and Kelly hear a really awesome soul singer. And then 
John wants to block Kelly, but they both turn their buttons and John's the initial guy who gets to work with the artist. Um, so those are kind of the blind audition rules. Um, but after you make blinds, then you go to battle rounds. And battle rounds is where um, you go up against another artist and there's three options. You, you get like picked by the coach and you stay. You get saved by the coach and you stay, or you get stolen by another coach. So you get picked, which happens each time. Um, but if a coach picks one artist, then he has the option to save the other, but you only get one save and you only get one steal. So there's that battle round. So um, yeah, that's kind of as that's how far I made it. Um, and what's crazy is because they um, they showed my battle round the first night and um we actually went like the last night of battles like recording so all the coaches already used their saves and all their steals so it looked like so many people commented and were like why weren't you saved why didn't somebody steal you what was going on we, this makes no sense or whatever and i was like thank you guys so much but all of them were used up so there was like no chance even though it didn't look like that on tv but mm. um, yeah i'm still super grateful for for the whole experience man right same yeah and, and you got picked by blake shelton right yeah yeah like that's crazy the second blake shelton turned on the blind I'm so excited that was my blind yeah wow. i hit my last i was singing my last note and i was like i'm going home like this is it thank you so much for having me and really like you don't hear the buttons like turn around you don't hear that you just have to see it so i'm singing my last note and like closing my eyes and i was like all right going home and I hear Blake say, I got it. And I was like, I looked and then I saw his chair like turn around. I was like, this is not. Ooh, I'm getting emotional not listening real. to this. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. It was, it was so intense. Damn, that's lit, man. That's crazy. Hey, so, 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 so he worked with you? Like he vocal coached you? Um, so there's, um, there's vocal coaches that help artists like weekly kind of that are like assigned to you. Um, and then we kind of get like a one-on-one -on -one session with our main coach um, before our next performance. So, right. yeah, but they really, man, the voice production team has got it going on because every person that works there is amazing. Every vocal coach that we got to work with was insane. Um, and then we also got to work with like stage performance coaches who helped us kind of map out how we were going to perform our song, which totally like went out the window as soon as we got on stage. Um, but yeah, it was still, everybody was amazing. That's crazy. Amazing. What a great, that, like that story is so inspirational. I love, I love that. I love that. Um, so, so tell me this, like, so, so now you've got the rest of your music career ahead of you. Like, I want to know what, how do you approach music? What is it that you, I mean, I'm just so curious as to like your creative mind, like with, how you make yeah. songs yeah um this is really cool because um there is like no one cookie cutter way to do it um right. especially i don't know. so i'm kind of having a ton of fun with how i get to do it because i feel like if if i were with a label i would be i would be told kind of what songs to sing how to sing it what to look like and like mm. all this stuff so i'm like you know what? let me just have as much fun as i can and get as creative as i can with with all these endless possibilities of putting out music so um that's what i've been doing um when i'm when i'm creating any kind of song like man melodies usually come first um but lately i'll be honest lately like i'll like open up my notes app and all the lyrics just like come all the lyrics just like the whole story gets mapped out there's no music there's no melody there's just like little rhymes and like things that I hear in my head and then I'll, I'll like bring it to a producer and I'll be like all right I have this idea I think this could be really really cool and this just happened recently and I was like I have no idea what's about to happen but um he ended up putting music behind it and then all the melodies just kind of came and just like man music is magical sometimes when it yeah. just comes together like that and you have a studio session that's just like seamless and a ton of fun to where you're like dancing to your demo at the end of the session that's like that's one of the best that's what i live for like 
when the demo sessions are good, you know the world is gonna like take it and love it, or at least you hope so. If not, then yeah. your reward is like, wow, I love this song. I'm super stoked about it. Doesn't matter yes. if anybody likes it or not. So yes, yeah, yeah, it's different every time. I love that. You know, it's funny. Like, so I uh, the way I feel about music, like when I'm making it, is like I just feel like it's ultimate freedom. Like that's oh, yeah. the way I feel. Like I feel like this is, you know, and it's so weird because in our society, we're about to, maybe we'll get hella deep right now. But like in society, like we're so we're money focused. Like, and I care about money too. I'm a big I I love money, you know. But I feel yeah. like I'm starting to realize the things in life that are like gonna offer me uh, uh, the most fulfilling life, and it's like yeah. not just gonna be money. And I've realized like when I'm here doing music, like on my keyboard or on my piano. Uh, or whatever recording vocals like it just it just feels like ultimate like I'm free like there's and there's nothing else that is important at that moment yeah. you know what I mean I saw a tweet the other day and it was like would you rather be famous for what you do or make a living from what you do and I was mm. like oh like let me sit on that for a second that's a tough one well known or would I rather like make a living and part of me was just like man I'd rather I'd rather make a living like to be able to do what I love and people love it enough that it supports me mm. financially so that I can have the freedom to like do whatever I want in life. Then that's, that's the goal. Like if you can I agree. make a living off of doing what you love, like, and I know some people take that and they put a lot of pressure on it. They're like, don't put money on what you love to do because that's like, that's where things get iffy. And then you're too tied to money and you make things you don't want to make. And, I don't think that's the case. Like, I think you're limiting your mindset, you know, like if people support you, then continue to like do what you love to do and they'll continue to support you. you know? Right. Um, so yeah, that's a tough question, but. That's me, a really good, that's a good um, question. That's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I saw that tweet and I was like, Oh yeah, that's living, good. Make a living for sure. I mean, the way, the way I see that is like, fame is for other people like you being known has is like you're rewarding other people but like the money is you're rewarding yourself so you know what I mean like that's the way I that's the way I look at money too by the way like because it's it's hard because you, you have like you have like impact like you want to make an impact on people with your music and inspire people and change their life and then you want to make money but it's so it's like that I think that's why people get so like convoluted with like like what you said, like people will say, like, don't let money get involved. But it's like, well, how am I supposed to, I don't know. It, I don't even want to get into the whole money thing because it's oh, like, I how am I that. supposed to, how am I supposed to eat? How am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to put clothes on yeah. without money? Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? And yeah. if I have to. <laughs> I've had this conversation so many times. Like, like when I was in, oh my gosh, I was in middle school. The money, the money conversation has to be had. Like, yeah. it's a huge thing. It's what makes things happen. Without money, you don't really have music. Kind of, right. I mean, of course, you can like make music and stuff, but <laughs> you're gonna have to get a MIDI keyboard with some speakers and like to produce your own stuff. Um, but pay a producer. Um, but yeah, I, I was in like middle school, and somebody, my teacher, was like, Does money buy you happiness? And I sat there and I was like, But wait, like, money buys me like Fruity Pebbles, and I like that. Like, Fruity ah! Pebbles. I like that a lot Love that. So, and that's a lot of happiness for me right there so right. just over the years I'm, I've just like realized the value of not that it's like the core of happiness because that is not true um because you really gotta like you gotta be grounded but like man financial freedom is goals you know because then there's endless possibilities and collaborating with other artists making music paying any kind of producer that you want you know like crazy and no, that's real. That's real. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it, the thing is like the reality, the, here's the reality too. Like if, if you love music, which we do, everybody listening to this podcast is like a musician or a music person. Yeah. If you love music and like, that's all you want to do with your life. Yeah. If you're not having money come in from music, you have to go spend your time doing something you really don't want to do to make money. Yes. And then you're not getting to work on music. So to me, that's where I see money being something that is, I just think money's a tool and I think money's like a resource to really do what you want. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a huge conversation, especially as like, like I'm an artist, 
who does not make a full-time living off of music right now. So of course, like I, I still have my other creative outlets, which is cool. Like anybody who's creative and is an artist, like when you're getting started, you still have to like bring in an income. So for me, it's like creating videos for other artists, which ends up like turning into like collaborations or um, it gives me knowledge to like put that kind of production towards my own single or my own song. So um, yeah, there's always, always ways to make money, but ultimately, man, I feel like something happens with music and then people love it so much that they do end up buying your music, supporting you, buying your merch. Like that's, that's end goal for me, for sure. Right. Yeah. And I, it's the, it's the end goal for ev everybody. I it was a musician, I think, you know, and like, yeah. um, what do you think about what's going on right now with the fact that there's no concerts and there's no tours? I mean, how do you look at your music career? Do you look at your music career differently because of that? Um, it's kind of, and like that's a good question because I'm I feel like I'm just getting started with like launching things as an artist without playing out <laughs> and so what I'm realizing is the biggest avenue for any artist is not for any beginning artist is not live shows like it's your social media it's mm. it's your following it's it's the videos that you can create and the connections that you can make oh shoot did that just rhyme the connections that you can make online you know what I mean right so it's all about networking with people because it's almost to me in my mind I I, I don't play out live and I, I, I am so excited to do that eventually in my life but like what is stopping me from connecting with everybody on TikTok with like a 30 second video sitting in my room nothing mm. And it's crazy the reach that you can get with these platforms, you know, like mm. play your own original stuff and like put it out there and see how they take it. And then it's like, it's out there. Like people can watch it as much as they want and it'll, it, it's helping me as an artist, you know, it's not limiting me to keep things online. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think artists make good money from shows, which um, is something that, is amazing um and I'm, I'm able to book a couple shows in i think we're doing like a little mini christmas tour type thing um in a couple venues that are starting to open up so that's awesome but the only benefit of that is like it's it's going to be able to like get me through the holidays um just with a couple shows which is amazing but the outreach isn't isn't like massive you know so mm -hmm. I don't know. I think like, it's okay. Like put your stuff online and see where it goes. YouTube is a huge platform. Facebook, things go viral so quick. TikTok is just taking off. Things aren't limited there. Like it's crazy. Right. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I, I'm obviously, you know, I'm do, I'm, I do the whole like marketing thing. Like I'm big on that. And, um, yeah, what I, what I've learned, um, just to give a little insight from, from my perspective on what you're doing, it, everything you're doing is great. Like you have potential to, you know, you have potential to, to, to reach a higher platform because you're hella talented and there's just not that many really, well, there are, there are a lot of talented people, but you know, it gets, <laughs> yeah, it gets dwindled down though to the people who are really talented and you're up in that, to me, that category of you're actually very good. Um, and just to give you some insight on stuff that I've learned, like, Give with, it all um, to me. I'm ready. No, yeah, I want to. I want to. Yeah. So, like, with like marketing and stuff like that. Um, so, step out of the music world for a second, and let's just talk like just regular business, like outside of it. Hit me. Um, you know what? What you're what what you're trying to do as a business is you're trying to basically what we call it is like own the traffic. Like you want to own it, and so um, you want to acquire the chance to basically reach somebody directly with no barriers. And, and the best way to do that right now, the two best ways to do that are email and right now SMS, text message marketing. That's something that's like, I have no experience with it, but it's on the come up. And I've heard from successful music entrepreneurs right now that are using it that are like, this is boosting me, but I haven't gone into it. But essentially it's those kinds of channels that, you know, email marketing is still the main one. And so, you know, the question then for us as musicians, 
that now back to the music space becomes, well, how do you grow an email list? Like that's the thing, right? When you're a business or an online entrepreneur, what you do is you, you know, you give somebody something for free in exchange, they give you their email address, they get that thing that you promised them, and then you email them and you, you, you nurture that relationship with them. And then you continue to make them feel good about connecting with you. And then eventually you pitch them some kind of a product, something lined up with what they need. Right. And so, um, as a music producer, like I make beats. So that's what I do. And I, my, 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 the thing that I give people for free lead magnet is what that's called is I say, Hey, you want 15 free beats? Like you're a rapper. I know they're rappers. Cause I, I target them. I use Facebook advertising and I make okay. sure I target rappers. I'm like, yo, you're a rapper. I'm a producer. You need beats. I got them for free. Click below. You'll get 15 free beats. Boom. You know? And then I get people to come onto the email list. After that, I'm pitching them like a, like a little bundle of like, here's yeah. a bunch of beats and here's some free stuff uh, and included with it. And it's like, whatever, 30 bucks or whatever. It's like super cheap. Um, yeah. And that's kind of the way that I've grown as a, as a producer. I'm trying now to take that concept as an artist because it's way harder. Like, how do I get someone to give me their email for free? Uh, or, or I'm sorry, give me their email and I give them something for free. Like, what would they want from me? And so the way I've looked at it, what, what I've studied is, if you get someone to fall in love with you through videos, maybe some behind the scenes stuff, yeah. then you, then they, then they see that there's an opportunity to get on your email list. They'll be like, Oh yeah, I remember that guy. I remember that girl. Like I saw her videos. Or I saw his, whatever. I really like them. Oh, get on their email list. I can keep in touch. Cool. Like that's the kind of philosophy of it all. Um, yeah. That's like the bird's eye view. Like it gets really like, once you dig your hands into the, the weeds, it's freaking extensive, yeah. but you know, um, yeah, I kind of just ranted. I just wanted to throw that info at you because I know we talked about marketing and stuff. So, um, yeah, keep that stuff in mind. Like when you're looking out for like marketing and stuff, like the reason I said all that was we were talking about social media, right? And people get really caught up on social media because it seems like that's the way to grow. And it, and it's a, Instagram is a channel. YouTube is a channel. Like these are ways to get traffic. But the problem is that a lot of artists get so like we get so involved with those numbers and then we yeah. stop and it's like, it's, we, we, we stop. We we're like, okay, good. We got the YouTube. Now what? And it's like, you're missing this. It'd be like literally building the outside of a house. And then like inside, like there's no walls. There's no, like, there's no walls. There's no toilet. There's no sink. There's no refrigerator. Couch. It's just like the outside of a house. That's like yeah. social media is the outside you know, and like, once you get inside, what is there? Or it would be like, if a fan walked up to the house, there's no door. That's even more of what it's like. You can't even get in the house. So your YouTube channel isn't even your house. That's YouTube's house. And same with Facebook and Instagram, that's owned by Mark Zuckerberg. We need to own people's email addresses, bring them into our house and be like, Hey, come sit on the couch. Let's watch a movie. Let me serve you some tea and coffee. Like that's your email list. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just want you to start thinking about that stuff. Like, I'm trying to tell artists about that as much as I can. And like, I know it's super overwhelming. Um, no. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many easy ways to like set that kind of stuff up. Like, for instance, like I set my website up on Wix mm-hmm. um, forever ago, and there's just so many like connections through like Zapier or something yeah. to throw in like Mailchimp or some kind of outsourced email campaign that you can go ahead and set up so for instance like i've got this like christmas ep coming out um and i've like set up uh i've got to launch it but i'm putting together like little things that i won't put out on social media you know to like the real og fans you know what i'm saying so smart yeah so um yeah i think man you gotta hit it all because you can't you can't like do one without the other so i'm i'm always like if if you have the time because first of all content like takes so much time creating a website takes so much time like Mm. you creating an email campaign connecting and responding to these people like that's what they want they want to know that like you're real that like you're you're in the scene and you're you're available to the fans you know yeah um so anything man you take it and you go with it i to like a ton of Gary Vee and like nice. um listening to what is it the one million followers book or oh okay I got that book too yep mm-hmm. so um you just you just have to be 
always on your toes with like mm -hmm. things that are changing and things that are new in the whole market. Like you have to be on your toes and, and adapt with how everybody else is adapting. So, um, yeah, I love that. That's super helpful. So thank you. Yeah. I need to like, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Marketing for sure. Yeah. For sure. So you're already, it sounds like you're kind of already getting into the marketing stuff, which, you know, you're already a few, like a lot of steps ahead of a lot of artists and both of us are because we're like, realizing you know we got the money thing down we get that right yeah. you got to get money uh yeah. you got to market right so what are uh, let me let me just throw this last little question like what are some like create like what are some creative things that you see on the horizon for yourself in terms of like projects you want to do whether it be video albums collab like what are some things that you hope uh that you want to do man so this this EP that I'm going to put out, this little Christmas EP, is something that I'm super stoked about because it's like the first time I've ever like produced and cut and comped my own vocals. Oh, wow. um, so I had a ton of fun with that because we had to work kind of like virtually with this producer for a little bit. Um, and then I was able to get a bunch of other artists from The Voice together to do a Christmas mashup. So, wow. yeah, so I had a ton of fun putting this project together. Um, I have no idea how it's going to do because I'm like right. an artist coming out with nothing but like Christmas <laughs> and it's kind yeah. of a weird season that I'm in, but, um, it, to me, it was like, okay, what, what are the times right now? I just was on the voice. I'm not, I'm in, I'm like bound to this contract December 1st. Uh -huh. I don't really want to out any kind of original music so what's something like fun and creative I could do um so and once I got back and a bunch of artists came back from the show I was like let's get together and like do this um so I'm, I'm super excited to put that out um especially these YouTube videos I'm stoked to see like how they do um but if anything they were super fun to put together and then for sure like 2021 putting out my own original music, which is like one of the biggest steps I'll ever take. Singing Christmas is easy. Like putting out a Christmas like project is simple to me in my mind. People already love the music. Like it's not really risky. Putting out my own stuff is so scary and so uh, risky, but like yeah. I'm so ready to cross that line and just like go for it and just see what people, people like. And like, I have no, I don't have a yes or no from the audience yet which is a safe space to be in. People already say yes to Christmas music, but when you put your own stuff out, like the, the thing that an artist needs to realize is, is this a yes or is it a no? Do people like it or do they not? And if you don't ever like take that step, then you can stay in the safe space or you can just risk it and like let, let your music go and see what happens. So yeah, I'm stoked to do that. And January is that time. So let's see let's see that's amazing very cool so before you sign off like where can people find you where when and where can they hear this this christmas album where's the best place to stay connected with you yeah um for sure stay connected with me on instagram at um peyton lamar p-a-y-t-o-n-l-a-m-a-r um like kendrick we related <laughs> there's that ballroom dancing by the way you got like you the band with the dance moves like i love it um yeah i mean if you find like that's my name on every platform you you find the yellow shirt and that's me so um yeah and then my christmas ep is of course going to be like any streaming platform um but for sure follow or subscribe to my youtube channel because that's where all the like meat of the content's going to be that i'm stoked to put out so yeah that's that's everything i'm, I'm excited Awesome. Thank you so how about, much, please. Yeah. How about your website? You have a website too, right? Yeah. PeytonLamar.com. Perfect, guys. Go yeah. visit PeytonLamar.com. Go follow Peyton on Instagram. Shoot her a DM. Say, hey, love hey. the interview you did with Lizzie or whatever. And go Lizzie. check out the Christmas EP when it comes out. Um, yeah, Peyton, thank you.